Hi everybody, I'm currently busy at work editing the next Simpsons Histories video. But in the meantime, I want to let you know that I was recently a guest on the Recast with Pi Guy Rules and Monsters Review. I've included a link to the video in the description below. We do a comparison between Season 4's Camp Krusty and Season 28 Camp Krustier. Spoiler warning, Camp Krusty is better. But it's a really fun discussion about how to make a sequel episode and how to link them together. In the intro of the podcast, we talk about HBO Max, and I reiterate my Twitter grumblings about lame Disney Plus promos. Also, you can follow me on Twitter if you're interested. I'm pretty bad about plugging my social media. Anyway, here's an excerpt of the podcast. I don't know how many times this shows up, but I know it shows up at least like three times. Is that like Krusty's pacemaker, superfluous third nipple, and his <laughs> birthmark. That Like I know it shows up in the one where he pretends to be a fisherman. I know it shows up in the... Ah, uh, the first real crusty episode, the first Sideshow Bob episode. Oh yeah, the pacemaker. That's like if you need a way to resolve a crusty plot, you need to you need to like acknowledge his superfluous third nipple. <laughs> and I don't know why I find it so funny, but just I guess the fact that they always say like, oh, and his well documented super like like if you had a, a celebrity that you're a big fan of, of course you know that they have a superfluous third nipple. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> After the kids like tore off his shirt, wasn't he just like? Not as bad as customs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. This could be a dumb question, but that isn't possible, right? You can't have a third nipple. You can mutation. Can uh, you really? Like yeah, I, I, I didn't know if this was just a wacky Simpsons joke or if that was actually like a genetic abnormality or something. Mm -mm. And it's actually, I believe, it's relatively realistic the way the Simpsons does it because it's not like you'll have like a third pectoral muscle or whatever. It's like. Like there's just like another little little tiny nipple looking thing that's like right under, underneath the first one or something like that. I'm talking a lot about this as if I have one. I don't. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> I don't. Uh, and if you have one, it's okay too. You, don't yeah. worry if you have one. We are either. not nipple shaming on this podcast. <laughs> the more, the merrier. Uh, mm, um. But yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's a real thing. Maybe I'm not. Maybe maybe I'm crazy. Are pacemakers a real thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. They're for like. <laughs> Heart attacks, right? <laughs> Something like that. Um, <laughs> uh, another really great exchange between Bart and Lisa is, uh, we're all going to die. Isn't that how everyone ends? No, we're going to die soon. And then Bart's like, yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, that's a dark joke. I'm not delivering it in the right way. But that, that exchange was like, mm, good Simpsons one-upmanship. <laughs> okay, there's some, in terms of early installment weirdness, this is a really uggo Ralph Wiggum, if oh. I've ever seen one. His head shape is weird, and they, they did not get the hair right. Like, ugh. The weird thing in this one was that they actually do call him Ralph Wiggum in this episode, mm -hmm. because he wasn't originally supposed to be Wiggum's kid. And right. in a later episode this season, where he like tries to go out with Lisa, they decided that he was going to be Chief Wiggum's son, and they even reveal it in that episode. But in this one, they do call out Wiggum, and he does like reach up for his package. Huh. So I guess it must have kind of been in the works, or maybe it was an animation error or something. I don't know. Maybe. You're right. Some of the character like uh, <laughs> models are not. Yeah. There's a reason why they got rid of Klasky Chupo, I think. Aw, poor Klasky Chupo. They never get. <laughs> I know. I'm saying that, but I really liked their animation on The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. They do a good job on Duckman. Their animation fits that show. Another weird thing is that, like, Martin is considered fat like like yes his character design is chubby but only in the sense that like most Simpsons care like if if he's going to fat camp then Bart should go to fat camp too in my opinion I mean I get that it was just like a joke and they needed an established character to go to fat camp but I don't I don't know it, it just kind of seems weird I, maybe I'm wrong about that maybe he has always been considered really fat oh uh, yeah Bart is definitely about as fat as like all the kids on the show are pretty fat like all the males on the too. show are pretty fat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a it's an American sitcom. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling out our whole country. Dang it! Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, the fat camp also like th that that's there, but that doesn't serve any purpose. Well, that gruel joke is really good though. When he's like <laughs> scraping the gruel out of there at the end. Mm -hmm. In general, I think that it is a an episode that is definitely funny. Like absolutely, I, I you know no doubt about that. Uh, I've got some gripes in the story department, but it did really kind of make me feel like I was, you know, a kid again doing the last day of school and worrying about report cards and going to camp and stuff like that. Like it did it did kind of feel right in terms of capturing a feeling, which is not something I would really expect from The Simpsons. Usually, it, I, I don't know. I, I don't know that they, eh, 
I, I guess they kind of try to capture moments, but usually they're, I don't know, never mind. <laughs> Ignore that <laughs> point. I, I enjoyed this episode. I, I enjoyed the chill vibe it had. No, I think you're right. It's a pretty, it's a very impressionistic episode. It's just a lot of little vignettes, like a lot of little feelings, not really plot heavy, just a lot of funny jokes over and over again. The kind of thing that you probably wouldn't make a sequel episode out of. Yeah, I'm sorry, what? Oh, no. I, I don't know why anybody would do that. <laughs> well, M- Monsters, what did, you, what did you think about this overall, then? It was decent. Um, I mean, yeah, there were funny jokes. The amount of things that were happening did kind of catch me off a bit. Like, it kept my attention, but it just it didn't feel uh, too cohesive. But maybe that was just kind of the entire point. Mm-hmm. But no, you know, little side gags were good. It's kind of hard to understand these characters and, like, uh, understand where they're coming from or how they'd react or get little references from side characters when you're not invested in the show. Of course. But yeah, it was it was funny. It was decent. Yeah, s- solid episode. Like like when I did my season 4 rankings, I didn't put it in the top 10 of the of the season, but it's like very middle of the road for mm-hmm. season 4. Um very solid. Um just a lot of really funny jokes in there. I don't think it's like the funniest episode of The Simpsons, but it's solid all the way through. It's not super emotional either. So I guess that might be what you could argue maybe a problem with it is that it doesn't really it's not really like a laugh a minute and doesn't really have that heavy hitting emotional moment in it either. But it's just solid. Thanks again to Pie Guy Rules and Monsters Review for having me on their show. I'll be back in a few days from now with a new Simpsons video. Thanks for watching everyone.